Michael, let's talk first about this Ruth Mombati situation. You've been in the Northwest for some time now and you've been watching developments there. Be before we get into what happened to the monies, talk to us about what you found on the ground. How are the lives of communities being inconvenienced by this? It's a deplorable state of affairs. Um, this just happens to be one of the municipalities, a district municipality, which is responsible for a lot of bulk services. Um, and it has five local municipalities under it. Naledi municipality is one of those. I was staying in that particular area in Freiburg. Naledi has been placed under, under administration. It owes ESCOM 280 million rand. So it's not paying its debts. Then Treasury comes and says, to the district municipality, which invested 150 million, actually 210 million. They invested 60 million last year, February, for uh, a period of about three months. It got returned to them. They're one of the few municipalities who managed to get their money out again. So they put 60 in, they get 60 back out, 60.12. So they got about just over a million rand interest. Then they put in the 150 million in a tranche of 129.21. That goes in, it doesn't come back. So they've lost 150 million. Strangely, the forensic report says there's 101 that's there. So nobody, even in the municipality, can tell us, did somebody withdraw 48 and a half million? Why does VBS only have 101 left on its books? So the whole picture is rather murky. But what we do know, 150 is gone. Treasury has come to them to say, listen, we gave you money on a conditional basis that you would use it for bulk infrastructure, for municipal infrastructure, EPWP program. It totals 158.1 million rand. You didn't spend it on what you were supposed to. We want it back. So out of interest, I went to that district to see, can this municipality that invested taxpayer money, conditional grants from Treasury in VBS illegally, can they afford to have done that? And I think that becomes part of the devastating part of the story, Michael, the fact that even to begin with, this municipality did not have that kind of money to be investing around in any bank, regardless of whether it's VBS or whatever other bank uh, are, are out there as options for them. And when you get into how the lives of ordinary people are being affected, so those grants that Treasury issued to them, what were they supposed to do with this money? It was, it was for roads. It was for bulk infrastructure from the district. It can pay money out to local projects that is building as the district is building throughout the district. And it's supposed to go to municipal infrastructure, which is a massive problem in that area. What has not been built has not been repaired. There is not proper upkeep of maintenance. I had a look at their financials. They're spending 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3% of their annual budgets on repairs and maintenance. The, the correct standard is supposed to be closer to 1%, to 1 to, from 0.8% of their budgets. So they're not spending enough on repairs and maintenance. And then you go and look at these conditional grants, and they're investing it and not spending it on what they should have been. And the consequences for the people on the ground, one of the interviews, we're gonna hear from a lady, Linda, that I interviewed, mm -hmm. the people are understandably very angry. What did Linda have to say to you? Let's listen to that part. Right, sure. The problem in this community is that the workloosheid is so high in the region, and the fillers that are so ongeheerd is, is our children are sick, our old people, Wat die inkomste het, die, die government geen niks omvalle nie. En hierdie swak dienste wat die municipaliteit lever, dat is gaus van die municipaliteit. Want hier waar ek nou hier staan, dat is die plek waar die kinderse draaks rook en waar die mense vastle, want, om die mense te kom roof. Hier in ons paie langs kan jy sien hoe lyk die straten van die, die dreinwaterse wat afloop. Ons is mooi moe vir municipale se, se mense met hulle se swak dienste teen oor die gemeenskap. En, Michael, this dump site seems to be smack bam in the middle of where residents live. It looks like it's in front of somebody's gate. It is in front of somebody's gate. It's not a dump site. It's the sidewalk. <laughs> That's how bad it's become. There, there are throughout Coleridge, throughout uh, Huhudi, throughout Colorblock, uh, which are various areas around Freiburg, you just get these massive piles of rubbish that spring up everywhere if it's not strewn across 
across the grounds everywhere. But, but Michael, uh, how, how did, I, I mean, at some point, did, did the residents uh, try to explain to you how it gets to become that big pile, um, perhaps without anybody uh, taking initiative in and of themselves from the community? Because, you know, it's one thing, and absolutely government must be held yeah. accountable for not doing what they're doing. But at the same time, um, you know, it, 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 rubbish is piling up in front of somebody's yard. And I imagine that it took a while for it to get to what way it is. Were they simply just standing and watching on? So what you see there is 11 months worth of rubbish. So government hasn't done anything for 11 months. That doesn't stop the community from responsibly dealing with their rubbish. So it is a conversation that the cameraman and I had. And he also said, but surely people cannot go and just dump in front of somebody's house. Yeah. And the resident said, well, the first person comes and drops their, their bag full of rubbish there. The second person just comes and does it. Responsibility need, needs to be taken and by the And did you manage to speak well. to the person who, whose house all of this is in front no. of? What did they say to you? I said, How, what, what's it like living here? You've got raw sewage that's flowing out. This is another person's house. You've got raw sewage that's in your yard. And you've got this mountain of, of garbage. How, how do you do it? So the kids get sick. They're constantly coughing. Go to the clinic. The sisters tell you, no, you're not feeding your, your children proper food. And he says, it's not the food. It's the flies. It's the bacteria they're carrying that goes to sit on our food. The smell. He says, you don't even want to eat your food anymore. It's disgusting to live there. But of course, with the impoverishment that's there, what mm. alternative these people have but to stay where they do? And interestingly, Michael, when, when we were out in Guiani with communities that had sewage problems, those nearest um, to some of those plants had actually moved out of their houses. Mm. There were several empty houses in the area simply because of those uh, devastating health effects that, that you speak about. Yanka, the minister uh, in the last couple of weeks has been meeting some MECs and uh, some municipal managers over a turnaround strategy. Today, uh, what was that meeting about? Well, the thing is, he went to this specific municipality, the Maluti Apafung municipality, because he wanted to tell them about the fact that they are having this, uh, this consultative meetings and they are looking at addressing these challenges uh, that are being faced by municipalities. Because this specific area, the, the local businesses, and specifically the Harry Smith Business Forum, took the matter to court. Now this is uh, e earlier this year because ESCOM was threatening them with power cuts. But the thing is they're saying that they were in fact paying the municipality for e the electricity but the municipality wasn't paying ESCOM. And as you saw earlier, they have not paid it for about a couple of years, about since 2011. And this is now amounting to about 3 billion rand in unpaid bills to ESCOM. So ESCOM are saying we need to do something. Obviously we know ESCOM has not just, this is not the only problem that ESCOM is facing. So they were threatening power cuts, uh, but the businesses said that this can't be the way to deal with it because it is not our fault. They approached the court. The court actually agreed with them saying that uh, government, government needs to at some point start taking responsibility. They need to start addressing mm -hmm. defaulting municipalities because as we've seen it does affect the people on the street. Local government is where government meets South Africans and it's here where we see these troubles. It's effectively been it's seven years since 2011 so there's been seven years that mm -hmm. government had an opportunity uh, to respond to this. What are the the municipal managers telling the minister you know he, he hasn't been in that portfolio for those seven years mm -hmm. but what is the track record of um, whether it's the follow-up with the money. Do they know what happened to the money? Can they at some point be able to, to, to show the paper trail of the monies that have been paid by residents? Well, this is what this meeting was about because the court now said that they have to establish a task team that has to look at the recovery plan for this municipality. But you have to keep in mind this municipality has been under administration since February this year. And there's also been a lot of leadership problems. We've seen uh, a, a numerous uh, strikes by municipal workers because of unpaid salaries. So this is not the first and the only problem that this municipality faces. It's just because the local business has now said enough is enough. We need to do something about it. But now the minister said uh, that they agreed with the court that they do not want to fight this in court because everyone does in fact actually 
they have the same goal, and that's to increase or improve service delivery, and that's why they said that they need to move it outside of court and have this team working on it. But it's not just about service delivery, Yanka. When you're talking two billion rand and people have actually been paying their revenues, you know, the situation is different to other parts of the country. We know that uh, places like Soweto are a political hot potato where uh, some residents there are simply not paying um, the municipalities they bill. And so you, you have government court in this position. Do they cut off the power or don't they? And it remains a political hot potato. But yeah. these are residents who have been paying their bills. So accountability then needs to take place. They're yeah. people who must be held accountable. Is the minister at all looking for those people that need to be held accountable? Or is the approach the same that he told Michael Apple about, that it's just collective responsibility? Well, in this case, he said that apart from this uh, meeting that's going to look at the recovery plan, they are going to have a separate investigations into what exactly happened. Because it doesn't, three billion rand of unpaid bills to ESCOM obviously does not happen overnight. So he did mention to me in his interview today that they will be looking uh, at other investigations if there is at all uh, evidence and there is some uh, follow up that they can follow up with the police. They did say that someone will need to be held accountable because it also is the the whole kind of atmosphere at local government it seems to be happening and no one seems to be held accountable at the end of the day so according to the minister in this case he did say that they will uh, make sure that someone's held accountable if the evidence is there but they'll they'll have to look at that all right well let's look at some of the interviews you did today Firstly, I think uh, uh, the municipalities are not able to collect properly so you have a huge amount of uh, electricity that goes into the uh, municipality, but uh, they don't collect properly. Uh, some of the situation we've got just technical wastage that goes on in the process. They lose electricity, they lose water through leaks and systems that are not well uh, you know, structured. Then, of course, you've got also the breakdown of infrastructures, uh, transformers that uh, are just burst out and so on. Then you've also got a challenge of their systems inside the municipality systems for collection uh, are not up to date and we're revamping all of this. And then on top of all of that, you've also got problems of uh, administration, maladministration, where we actually have to bring in an ad, uh, administrator to deal with that. We expect that the proper investigations will take, uh, will take place, that where there's a culpability and criminal activities, that actions will be taken. All right. Uh, thank you both for the work that you've been doing in terms of tracking the story. These are stories that are certainly far from over, and they become more and more important as we head to May, because we know that uh, by the time we get to May, many promises will be made mm -hmm. in an attempt to deal with uh, some of uh, these problems. And just before I let you go, Michael, when you were out there, any indication that there are other political parties that are already jumping onto the bandwagon and using this as potentially some election? engineering material? Well, they'd miss an opportunity if they didn't. Um, I did reach out to several uh, political parties while I was out in the district. Um, that news piece will be coming out tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned for what the ANC is saying, what the DA is saying, what the EFF is saying. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a deplorable situation and one in which you think political parties this close to elections would be jumping all over. All right. Well, uh, talk about keeping us in suspense there, Michael. So, <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait until tomorrow then. Michael Apple, Yanka told me thank you both.